I don't quite know how to put this, but I am kind of a big deal. I am very important. I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. This is my golden age room, and join me where I revisit vintage delights and smoke the finest Cuban cigars. If there is one thing that is very clear throughout mankind's history, it's that we in Britain love a bloody good war. From the Battle of 1066 to World Wars 1 and 2 to Jamie Oliver's war against fat people, there is nothing better than a little bit of extreme collective aggression and destruction to capture the imagination of the human spirit. The world of games consoles has been no different. In this day and age, these console wars span continents. Something those Germans couldn't even achieve. As you have probably already guessed, I am referring to the overhyped battle between the PS4 and the Xbox One, where it doesn't matter which console you buy, as you can play Call of Duty, Battlefield, Assassin's Creed and FIFA on both of them anyway. <laughs> but let's rewind the clock back to the 80s and early 90s. There was other wars going on. And no, I'm not talking about the Falklands War, I'm talking about the much more exciting war between Sega and Nintendo. You know, the good old days, Mario vs Sonic, where innovation was an everyday occurrence. But wait, there was actually a console war predating all of these. It was by no means the original console war, but it may have been the first one that actually mattered. However, with this war, us Brits decided to mainly stay out of it. Over here we were focusing on PC gaming and our battles here raged between the likes of Sir Clive Sinclair ZX Spectrum computers and Sir Alan Sugar's Amstrad computers. But in the background of all this, some people opted for the easier to use cartridge based consoles such as the Atari 2600 or 2600 as I like to call it. Whilst everyone in the UK was mostly wrapped up with their home computers, Across the pond, the first big console war was about to take place. The oh-so-popular Atari 2600 finally had some worthy competition in the form of the Mattel Intellivision. The Mattel Intellivision, with its cutting-edge sound and graphics, was the world's first 16-bit games console and was a very worthy contender to Atari's throne indeed. Atari had a three years head start in the market as it came out in 1977. But in 1980, the new kid on the block, Intellivision, led their attack, and didn't they do it in style? The Intellivision epitomises elegance and sophistication. Its wooden golden coloured panels make the system a thing of beauty. In this David and Goliath-like battle between Atari and Mattel, Mattel made sure they came armed with much more than just a slingshot. Apart from having both superior sound and graphics to that of its competition, it also came with the most sophisticated controller ever seen on a games console. On top of all of this, Mattel invested $6 million into a strong advertising campaign in which they would compare their superior hardware to that of the Atari. This aggressive marketing whipped the media into a frenzy in anticipation for this console war. By the end of 1982, 2 million in television consoles had been sold, earning Mattel a whopping $100 million in profit. Well, that was a little bit of history on the system for you. Now it's time to take a closer look at the Intellivision. As I mentioned to you earlier in this video, the Intellivision appeared to sell fantastically in the United States. However, here in the UK, I have never heard any Englishman reminiscing about their experiences with the system. So I make the assumption that it must have sold quite badly. However, one day I was going through a Facebook buying and selling group and I managed to purchase this, my very own Intellivision. So it must have sold in some capacity. First, let's take a look at these beasts of controllers. These controllers feature gold discs, which were more sensitive than its Atari joystick counterparts and a number pad in which you could use with plastic overlays in which came with each game. Now we have got that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the games. This game is Star Strike. The first time I put this cartridge in a few months ago, I was genuinely shocked by how good this early 80s console game looked. 
I literally said wow out loud seeing this Star Wars Death Trench inspired game in action for the first time. You play as a tiny spaceship which you view from a third person perspective. Your goal is to bomb five targets as you make your way through the trench. Like in Star Wars A New Hope, you have enemies trying to shoot you from behind, who you can gun down yourself when they fly into range. The best thing about this game, by far, is the graphics. However, unfortunately, the gameplay isn't quite up to scratch. It kind of reminds me of a lot of the AAA crap that is released today. All style and no substance. The Intellivision also received its own version of Donkey Kong. Although graphically superior to its Atari 2600 counterpart, the game suffers in the gameplay and controls department. For example, when Mario jumps, he gets little distance and appears to slow down. This dampens the game instantly. On top of all of this, what's wrong with Donkey Kong's face? Its sequel, Donkey Kong Jr. on the other hand, is a much better arcade conversion. Donkey Kong Jr. is both colourful and smooth, and shows off some of the fun the system is capable of. There is some faithful arcade gameplay found to be lurking in this one. It surpasses the first Intellivision DK game in every way. In 1981, Asteroids was released by Atari. It was a massive hit. Mattel fired back with Astro Smash, which combined some of the best elements from both Asteroids and Space Invaders. You control a cannon in which you move back and forth along the surface, in which you must shoot the falling asteroids coming from above. Every time you hit one, they smash in half into smaller pieces. Obliterating asteroids is jolly good fun, and blasts even destroy other objects in the vicinity. Horse Racing, released in 1980, is a fantastically quirky game. This game is actually a betting game in which, of course, you must place bets on horses winning races. When you scratch beneath the surface, you will see that this game is very well put together. You and a group of friends all start out with $750 each and bid on a series of four races. You can view the recent history of each horse before placing bets and you even get your chance to strategically coax and whip your horses in order to strategically win the races. Everyone loves a severe whip cracking. This game is jolly good fun. Who needs Royal Ascot, eh? That was just a small snippet of some of the 160 games currently available on the Intellivision. Remember, so far I can only talk about the games in which I actually own and have played. But as I build my collection, I promise to you to do more in-depth thorough reviews of some of the games on the system. My final thoughts on my experiences with the Intellivision so far is the Intellivision is an interesting footnote in gaming history and I would recommend buying this console to any vintage gaming enthusiast as it has a large library most of which are available for pretty cheap. Its key strength is its graphical superiority over its Atari competition. However to be completely honest with you I much prefer using the simple Atari joystick over the so-called superior in television controllers. They just do not function anywhere near as well. The large amount of buttons on the controller just seemed a little bit convoluted to me for such simple games. Something else I didn't find great about the controller was the gold disc in which was used as a directional pad. I found after repetitive use my thumb would begin to hurt after a while. So my advice to you for old school high score fun Go for the Atari, however if you're looking for something a little bit alternative and a little bit more quirky, then go for the Intellivision. Either way, I am sure you'll have a lot of fun with both. The mighty Intellivision will always live on. Cheerio! Right, this is my outro where I'd usually tell you to hit the subscribe button, click my annotations, blah blah blah, but I've actually just discovered this hilarious song, so I advise you stay here and give it a listen. <laughs> You were my love and my friend I thought the game would never end You tore out my heart without an escapism Behaviour that hard to defend How could you put 
Intelligent. 